Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been covering the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I gave you day one coverage. I've given you day two coverage. This is an extension of the day two coverage. Witness Isaac Baruch uh, has now claimed that Amber Heard taunted Johnny Depp and accused her of extorting and blackmailing him. They did this on the stand, under oath. A lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, of course he's going to be biased. It's like, okay. That's fine, but let's see if the same remarks are going to be made when every single one of Amber Heard's witnesses are called to the stand. Because, yeah, the same argu argument can be made, right? But this is fascinating stuff. Uh, and if you watched the coverage yesterday, especially the live stream, this guy was incredibly likeable. Really, really nice guy. So let's take a look, right? So on the second day of Johnny Depp's defamation lawsuit against Amber Heard, one of Johnny Depp's longtime friends, Isaac Baruch, they've known each other since being uh, teenagers in Florida, took to the stand where he testified that Amber Heard taunted Johnny Depp during an argument where Depp accused Heard of cheating on him with another man. Now during cross, so cross examination, one of Amber Heard's attorneys asked Baruch, let's go back, you testified that you observed an argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Do you recall that? You came into the room, Mr. Depp had Amber on speakerphone. Do you recall that? Baruch replied, yeah. The attorney then asked, Mr. Depp was drunk, do you agree? Baruch answered, yeah. Again, he's just a really likeable guy, really honest. Like, everything he's saying was just, it just seemed really honest. The attorney then asked, do you recall that Amber was in London, not actually New York? Baruch answered, no. When asked to elaborate, he said, no, I thought she was in New York. Next, Heard's attorney would then ask, and you recall that Mr. Depp was accusing Amber of sleeping with somebody, right? And there's, I mean, there's literally CCTV footage of people with Amber and stuff like that. He responded, there was somebody else in the room with her, and that's what they were arguing about. Pretty fair statement to make. Someone's across the world, someone's in the room with her. I mean, you'd be a bit like, what's going on here? The attorney then asked, are you sure Mr. Depp wasn't thinking there was someone in the room? and she was trying to tell him there wasn't somebody in the room. Mr. Baruch asked the attorney to repeat the question, to which the attorney said, are you sure he wasn't saying someone was in the room, and she was trying to convince him there wasn't anybody in the room? Baruch would then answer, well, he said that he heard the other voice. However, he said he didn't hear anyone else. Oh no, I walked in there already. This is already in motion. So Mr. Baruch then began describing the phone call. Amber was saying, come on, baby, why are you being like this? What are you doing? Come on, Johnny. There's no need. Why are you being like this? And it was taunting. So literally taunting. And there's even like statements from Johnny Depp's brother, uh, sister, sorry, where she said Amber Heard called her brother fat and old. It was just an awful person. The lawyer then asked him to explain why he described it as taunting. And he said, because... They're in the midst of no solution. At that point, it would be instead of taunting, saying, listen, John, let's talk tomorrow. Let's end this conversation right now and we'll talk tomorrow and we'll get to an understanding because there's not going to be any solution right now. But there was none of that. It was just continuous, our baby, our baby, and that it kept going. Again, pretty fair statement. And this is her body language the entire trial so far. And staring down Johnny Depp. Not exactly the sign of a, a victim. Mr. Baruch would go on to reiterate that he didn't hear anybody else and he didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. He also detailed that Depp hung up, heard called back and that there was a third call between the two before Johnny Depp went to the couch and fell asleep. So following the testimony, the lawyer would then ask if he was angry at Mr. Uh, Mr. Heard, well, Miss Heard, and he responded saying, when? Oh, about all the phony about that phony pictures that were taken and put in tabloids and about the fake narrative and about the way she got a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail a man. Yeah, that kind of got me frustrated. Confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is to not talk to each other. Uh, when asked if he was still angry, Brooke responded, you know something, it's six years. It's six years. Am I angry anymore? What I am is tired and I want uh, this all to end, her to go to heal and him to go to heal. He continued, so many people have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created and has gone out the door and around the world. I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years. 
I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her. For her to take her responsibility, heal and move on. Move on. And for Johnny, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this. Uh, and it's not fair. It's not right what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected for this. It's insane how this happened. <clears throat> Her's lawyer would then ask, you don't know whether Mr. Depp has committed domestic violence of Amber Heard, do you? And he answered, I've never witnessed. I never saw or witnessed whatever type of claim that is being said ever. I've never seen him be violent since teenagers from first meeting. I mean, pretty good character reference, to be honest. Um, so yeah, pretty... Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, and again, I've, I've been covering this pretty extensively. Um, sort of bits and pieces here and there. But I mean, this is just mad. And they don't have... This article doesn't have pictures of Johnny Depp. But the, the body language between the two of them is insane. So this is Amber Heard's look. And she's twisted. She's turned side on to face Johnny Depp. And obviously Johnny Depp, you know, feels really uncomfortable in this entire situation. And has physically moved his chair so he doesn't have to face her. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Just that, literally, accuses her of blackmail, extortion, trying to extort money from him. Um, yet she got a fraudulent a DV claim to extort and blackmail a man. Again, all this is under oath. Uh, again, you know, for what it, for what it's worth, right? For what it's worth. But the writing is on the wall. It does seem it, anyway. Uh, and there seems to be some pretty big wins for Johnny Depp here as well. It'll be interesting to see how this develops and where this goes. But it's pretty crazy. It's it's pretty crazy. Uh, and and the, the stories and statements of Amber Heard taunting Johnny isn't just from, you know, this one individual... Uh, Isaac Baruch is actually from multiple people. Um, you know, Johnny Depp's sister, Isaac Baruch. I'm sure we'll learn more. I'm sure there'll be more people that come out. But yeah, I mean, we're going into day three. This is set to be like a five to six week trial. Uh, and this is pretty big. Like, it, it, it's a pretty big trial for... You know, this was just one accusation. And a, a man was uh, absolutely destroyed in the court of public opinion for it. One accusation just destroyed a man's life. And, you know, now he's got his day in court finally. It'll be interesting to see where this goes. And if it does side with Johnny Depp, this is this is massive stuff. It's huge stuff uh, for men and men's rights, right? Like, in terms of men and male, male domestic violence actually being taken seriously. Because part of the counterclaim is that, no, uh, she's not... You know, she was never abused. She is an abuser. Uh, you know, even so much so that her, you know, his sister who manages him and production companies uh, had to book, you know, an extra hotel room. So if they argued, he would go off and be able to remove himself from the situation. Basically, just go and hide. I mean, he doesn't seem like an awful person from all accounts. But it'll be in And again, body language speaks volumes. Like, it really does. You know... You can, you can actually see his chair is twisted here, but he's obviously been looking at something on the screen. But his body language, he's facing away, and then she is literally facing towards him. It's, it's almost taunting body language. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I hope you've appreciated this coverage and continue to appreciate this coverage. Give the video a like and a share. Let's get these videos out there. Take care.